Hey guys, welcome back to Modern Country Living. If you watch some of my videos, you know that I'm kind of a goofball from time to time. <laughs> it's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, you know, got this engineering degree, uh, do these serious things in my life, but I love to have fun. I really do. I love to laugh. Uh, I love to have a good time. And so on my other truck, I have a train horn. And I joke the reason that I put that train horn on that vehicle is because in the town where I live, uh, in one of the two towns where I kind of spend my time, kids tend to like to walk down the middle of the road versus using the sidewalk. And so my horn on my other truck, the Super Duty, is kind of anemic compared to the vehicle. And I put that train horn on it and it's pretty loud and uh you know, it's kind of like uh, when I pull into the YMCA and the kids are there and they're giving me the whole, you know, give me the train horn treatment. Some of them know it. Uh, and then you blow it and they fall over like those fainting sheep. It kind of makes me laugh, right? They, everybody's kind of having a good time. And sometimes, you know, for example, I've been pulling my boat or having a piece of equipment on the trailer and someone, you know, tries to cut you in your lane or whatever. I've had this happen with tractor trailers and whatnot. And when, you know, you get, you get their attention when you have a train horn. So on Baby Yote behind me, I've got a horn on that. It's a normal, normal horn that comes with the vehicle. And so I was looking at doing something a little different. So I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up one of these super loud air horns. So this is kind of nice. It doesn't require an air tank. It actually just uses uh, a little compressor that puts enough air output to drive the horns. And I'm guessing they're, you know, not exactly train horns, right? They're a lot shorter than the other horns in my other vehicle. And only two tones, but uh, probably fairly loud, probably fairly high pitch. Um, yeah, we're going to find out. So wanted to chronicle the installation of the these and how they sound and yeah, just have a little bit of fun. You know, every time we turn around, you know, everybody wants to be very serious and I like to smile, like to have fun and want my kids to know that I'm not just this uptight person. So <laughs> stay tuned, all right? All right, so first thing we're gonna do is get into this package, which of course this is like that awesome, you know, clamshell packaging. Doesn't just rip apart, tries to hurt you when you get into it. Let's see what I can do with a pair of scissors here. Looks like we're getting it. <laughs> Okay, got the compressor, horns, got a little solenoid here, some tubing, must be a little Y connector, there it is, a little Y connector in here. All right, so we've got the Y connector, which is gonna allow us to come out of the compressor, go to the two horns. Got the tubing, we'll have to cut that. Looks like install that onto there. Man, kind of a little chilly in the garage. It's 40 degrees, so I might have to warm this tubing up. What else we got? Uh, let's see. We got instructions. Let's see what the instructions are like. You notice it doesn't come with any wiring. Uh, has the terminals on the back of the compressor, plus or minus. And I'm gonna need to find a place to put this all in the truck as well. Let's see what we got here. Says it's 135 decibels, 12 volt, 40 amp relay, four pole, two way. All right, we'll have to make sure we understand how that's going. It says to mount the compressor in a vertical position. 
It says mount the horns so they are facing forward and slightly down for maximum efficiency. Um, one of the things I've read is, yeah, these uh, horns can actually come out. They're kind of, I don't know, friction fit in there. Uh, I've read about some people saying to just super glue them uh, so that they don't disappear on you. Hmm. We'll have to take a look at doing that. Also need to figure out the wiring. All right. So I'm probably gonna tap into my existing horn switch wiring. So when I press my horn, uh, I'll get my normal horn and I'll get these to fire as well. Um, so what's gonna happen is number 85 is gonna be tapped into my horn switch. So I gotta cut into that line to this uh, relay here. So the relay, not a solenoid. Um, and number 87 is gonna go to the positive on the actual uh, compressor. So on the back of this, there's the positive. Number 86, uh, I gotta see what that's going to. And then number 30, let's see if I can find 30. That is the power coming from the vehicle. Hmm, all right. We will get that all installed. So let's take a look under the hood and see what we need to do. All right, so now I need to find a spot to locate all this stuff underneath the hood here. It'd be nice if I could get close to the battery, reduce the length of the run from the positive. If this, if this thing is truly dragging, you know, 20 amps or whatnot, keeping the wire circuit short would be important, but not sure if we're gonna be able to do that. Let's see, the existing horn is down here. And where's the wiring to it? Find the wires so we can tap into those. I think I have a game plan here. I'm going to locate the compressor on the passenger side. I fabricated this aluminum bracket I'm gonna use this existing hole here to mount it. And I have the compressor hanging like that. And my intention is to, I believe, place the horns behind the front bumper. I'll create a bracket behind there so they're up and protected. And then I use the Y uh, fitting that they gave me to adapt to the single hose tube and bring that up and around and over to the compressor. Now, there may be a little bit of lag with the fact that I'm gonna have a few feet of hose, but for right now, I don't know. I just worry about having the horns up under the hood and not getting the sound out of them that I want. So I think, I think I'm gonna try this to start. I'll fabricate a little mounting bracket behind the bumper for those, and I'll see how that works out. That's kind of my game plan right now. And here's a little bracket that I fabricated. So this is going to sit behind the bumper, up in there, The it'll be behind the bumper, and behind the uh, bumper mount, it'll hang on there, and the horns are, Point it a little bit downward so that if anything goes in them they'll drain and it puts the tubing towards this side where I can route it up to the compressor. I think I got it all figured out uh, so one of the things I've done there are two horns on this vehicle so I removed one of them and then I'm tapping in to the connector and running that over to uh, the relay here 
And we have a game plan. This 2002 Toyota Tacoma has a dual uh, horn setup stock. And so you can actually see this is one of the horns. So what I'm doing is removing that horn uh, from the plug. And I'm using that as a trigger wire for the relay that I'm going to relocate. I'm going to locate it over in this area. So what's going to happen is when I push the steering column horn, it's going to fire my stock horn, one of them, because I'm taking the second one off. And it's also going to trigger the relay. And I'll have power that's going to then run through the relay and go through uh, this little wire loom I made up here. Uh, so I've got wire inside the loom to protect it. I'll run that around over to the compressor. So I've got a ground wire here for the compressor and I'll have the power wire. I've already tested everything just to make sure it would work before I installed everything, but it looks like it's gonna work pretty well. So a little bit of a, you know, pain in the butt factor with uh, just getting everything kind of sorted out, uh, trying to understand how the horn was wired in with the original uh, OEM side of things. But uh, yeah, I think everything's gonna work out well. So my goal is to bundle all these wires up, get everything uh, run around in the engine bay here, zip tie it up, make all the final connections, and I'll test it out. Okay, we got the horn installed. As you can see, we got the engine bay all cleaned up here, ran the loom around. I still need to trim some zip ties, uh, get that kind of squared away. I gotta zip tie the air hose up a little bit. Wanted to say, uh, this creeper did a great job. My favorite creeper I've ever owned. There you have it. But I'm gonna blow the horn so you can hear how it sounds. Again, I've got one of the stock horns still wired in, and this also is the air horn from uh, Harbor Freight. So let's do it. So I'm guessing that'll probably get their attention. Uh, you can do see a little bit of a delay in one of the air horns kicking on. Uh, I don't know why that would be other than just the air pressure building up on it probably. Uh, there's probably a little bit of a difference between the two horns, but uh, I run the single hose or tube down and then I Y about that far away from the hoses or from the horns. So it should be about as good as I can make it. At any rate, uh, if you're in the market for an air horn, uh, this was like 15 bucks or 13 bucks, something like that at Harbor Freight. Uh, something fun should get the deer, deer's attention when I'm, when I'm going down the road in the morning and they're standing on Route 6. So at any rate, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks a lot.